In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the installation of Rad Studio XZ8. We'll go to the setup program, and after the install initializes, we have our first choice where we can select the setup language we want to use, whether it's English, French, German, or Japanese. We uh, localize the install and the ID for those four languages. The next screen has two options. First, uh, you need to agree to the Rad Studio license agreement and privacy policy. And you can see the links here for the license agreement, privacy policy, and the online installation notes. So let's check that. There's a new option, there's a second option here, uh, where you can choose to join the Embarcadero Customer Experience Program for Rad Studio. We'll instrument the IDE if you choose to join the program. And that will allow us to gather certain statistics about your use of the IDE so that we can improve future releases of Rad Studio. If you turn this off during install time, you can always turn it back on in the ID by using the tools options menu. The next step is to either browse for a license file, if you have a license file for XZ8, or to key in the serial number. After you've keyed in your serial number or browsed to your license file, depending on the key you have, whether it was for Delphi or C++ Builder or Rad Studio, in my case, I have a Rad Studio license key. So I get two choices to install the Delphi personality and the C++ Builder personality. Uh, I'll leave both of those because I do my presentations and demos and programming in both the Object Pascal and C++ language. The next choice is which languages you want to install on your machine for the localized IDE. And we have our choices again of English, French, German, and Japanese. I only speak English and a bunch of programming languages, so I'll just leave English as my choice. Next, we can choose which parts of XZ8 we want to install. Do we want the platform support of Android, OS X, Windows 64-bit, iOS, uh, help files, interface, uh, third-party add-ons, and so on? You can choose to install those or not to install. Let's leave all those on. It'll also tell me how much disk space is required. The next choice is whether or not you want to install the Android SDK and NDK. You might already have these installed on your machine, so you could skip this step if you want. If you already have the SDK and NDK, there's a link down here for how you can learn about how to install and do the setup for an already existing SDK NDK once the product install is complete. In my case, I want to install the latest Android SDK and Android NDK, so I'll leave those checked. You can also take a look at the license agreements from Android SDK and Oracle SDK uh, if you want to see what those agreements, but by checking these two boxes, you're agreeing to those license agreements. Next, the install looks at whether or not you have Interbase already installed on your machine. In my case, I have Interbase Server installed, and it's using the default GDS underscore DB instance in my services file. So I have two choices here. I can overwrite that instance with the new version of Interbase XZ7 that comes with XZ8, or I could have it create a new instance called developer IB XZ7 and put it on a different port, in this case 3054. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want to override. I want to have it create that new developer instance and put it on that port 3054. So I'll say next. Next, you have a choice of what you want to name your start menu group for the start menu in Windows. Uh, Embarcado Rad Studio XZ8 works for me. And whether you want to have it installed for all users of the computer that you're on or just the current user that's logged in. Uh, since this is my machine, I'll uh, click to install for all users. Next, we can set the destination folder for the application. It's a, the IDE is a 32-bit application, so it's going to get placed in program files x86. But you can install it somewhere else, or maybe a second drive. You can set the destination folder for all the samples that ship with XZ8. And you can choose the destination folder for the common files that are shared across different tools in XZ8. We'll just leave the defaults. You can also associate any extensions with Rad Studio XZ8. Do those file associations. And I'll just leave the defaults checked again for C++ Builder projects and Delphi projects. 
Finally, it checks to make sure everything is okay with the installation, that there's enough disk space. There's some temporary files that will get created uh, as part of the install. So everything looks good. Uh, the setup is ready to install XE8. And so we'll come back with the completion steps of the install. I should mention as part of the install that XE8 can sit side by side with Rad Studio XE7, XE6 on your system and so on. So it's okay to install side by side uh, different versions of Rad Studio, including uh, this one that's going in right now. XE8 will get installed in a subfolder that's numbered 16.0. XE7, 15.0, XE6, 14.0. Okay, when the install completes, you have the final screen. Couple options here. You can automatically check for updates when Embarcadero Rad Studio XE8 is run. Leave that one on. You can also view additional available downloads when you finish the install. We'll leave that check on as well and see what's available. And here's the available downloads HTML page. You'll also find this HTML page in the install for Rad Studio XE8. So HTML5 builder for Rad Studio. If you're a C++ developer and you want the Boost library, there's a link here for downloading the Boost library. If you want the Windows 8 SDK install, uh, you can click on that. For those of you that have the Architect Edition, uh, you can download ER Studio Developer Edition. Uh, if you've got the Ultimate Edition, you can download DB Power Studio. There are also additional partner products that you can install. IP Works from N Systems, uh, AQ Time Profiler from Smart Bear Software, and the Fast Report FMX Embarked Aero Edition for FireMonkey as a separate install as well. There's also an install for the BDE. Uh, if you still have old database engine based applications, that's a separate install that you can grab from your registered user download area. And now we have XE8 installed, so let's bring up the IDE. So here comes the Embarcado Rad Studio splash screen. It'll want us to register the product. So we'll put our EDN login. It checks to make sure we have a valid license key. And then we'll have this screen come up uh, since it's a new executable and I have Windows Firewall turned on. So we'll say yes, allow uh, Rad Studio to start up. And now we're in the IDE for Rad Studio XE8. We can start developing, we can configure the IDE, and we'll have a separate video for how to configure the development environment for the different target platforms that you might want to use as part of XE8.